and sisters, dear brothers, dear sisters, dear friend, in view of what you have just read or heard about the Judgment Day, would you like to have your name registered in God's Book of Life to avoid spending eternity in the lake of fire? The sooner you surrender your life to Christ, the better, as no one knows what will happen tomorrow. We pray that you will act now to save your soul. The choice is yours. Question, how can my sins penalty be paid so I may be saved and escape hell? Answer, the Lord Jesus Christ already paid the penalty for your sins on the cross at Calvary. The Lord prophesied in John chapter 12, verses 32 and 33, that, and I, that means the Lord Jesus Christ speaking, if I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all peoples to myself. This he said, signifying by what death he would die, which means when he is on the cross, you know, all those who believe on him, who put their faith in him, will be saved. Let us consider the Apostle John's admonition to the first century Christian in 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, where he admonished them. My little children, these things are right to you, so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is a propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. So we can see that God already made the provision and he's already determined uh, that he wants to save us. The Holy Scriptures teach us that our Lord Jesus Christ, the sinless Son of God, has already paid the penalty for all your sins. You may think that you have to lead a good life and do good deeds before God will love you. God's holy word says that Christ Jesus loves you enough to die for you even when you did not care about him. The Holy Spirit inspired the Apostle Paul to write in Romans 5, 8 that God demonstrates his own love for us in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Question. What happens when my penalty is paid? Answer. You can receive God's free gift of salvation found in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, which says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Grace is God offering you something you could never provide for yourself. Forgiveness of sins and eternal life, God's gift to you is free and it sets you free. You do not have to work for a gift. All you have to do is receive it by faith. Believe with all your heart that the Lord Jesus Christ died for you to save you. The acrostic, grace, is defined as follows. God's redemption at Christ's expense. So, grace, G, means God's. R means redemption. A means at. C means Christ and E, expense. So, God's redemption at Christ's expense. Question. What do I have to do to get God's gift? Answer, you must first receive Christ in your life as your savior. Then you become a child of God with joint heirs with Christ Jesus. The blessed news in John chapter one verse 12 reads, yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. This is an amazing inheritance for us. 
And in Romans 8, 16, uh, 16 and 17, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit, with your spirit, that we, you and I, are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joined heirs with Christ. Question, how do I do that? Or what can I do? Answer, you must make a confession of faith to receive the Lord Jesus Christ in your life. God's word says, if you confess with your mouth to the Lord Jesus Christ, or confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in him, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. This is given to us in Romans 10, 9, and this is uh, the point where uh, some people, uh, that is a contention they have, that they don't want to accept that. So the answer again is that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. You must make a decision right now to confess to the Lord that you are guilty, lost, and helpless sinner. Again, you must make a decision right now and confess to the Lord or to God. You know, basically, when we say Lord, we're talking about the Almighty God. Everything we are saying is to God. And when we believe, we believe in Christ. But everything, the prayer we pray, we pray to God. Everything we do, we do to God. So you must confess to God, the Lord God, that you are a guilty, lost, and helpless sinner. In addition, you must agree that you need the Savior, Jesus Christ, in your life. Again, we're talking about the true story of love. Before Christ redeemed us through God's grace and mercy, we were all guilty, lost, helpless, and bound for hell. Here is how you should pray to receive God's salvation and start enjoying a blessed personal relationship with the Lord. Pray the following. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I am a guilty, lost, and helpless sinner, and I am sorry for my sins. I repent of my sins against you and turn to the Lord Jesus Christ by faith right now. I thank the Lord Jesus for shedding his precious blood and dying on the cross for me and paying the price for all of my sins. Please wash me clean. I surrender my life to the Lord Jesus Christ right now as my Savior. Please grant me your Holy Spirit to take control of my life so I may obey you. Thank you for your grace and mercy upon my life for Christ's sake. Amen. So, after that, we have to say congratulations, uh, Christian brother and sister or friend. We join with you in thanking God. God's word says that if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior with all your heart, genuinely repent of your sins and surrender your life to him, you are born again of the Holy Spirit and given God's eternal salvation. Only the Lord Jesus Christ offers you such a glorious salvation. Believe it right now. We earnestly pray that you will understand and believe this true story, which is that God loves you and he desires to save you from the devil and the lake of fire. This is the story of true love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Remember, the Christian faith is not a one-step process. You must spend some time to study God's word every morning and evening and constantly pray that the Holy Spirit will guard your heart and control your life to be obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. After receiving 
God's eternal salvation. The Lord expects you to lead a godly life as evidence of your obedience to Him. You must bear spiritual fruit as a true Christian.